Okay. Uh, here we go. Titus Andronicus. Okay. Playing Tamora. Tamara. Tamora. Tamara. Tiana Tagami. Playing Satur Saturninus. 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 David Mackler. Playing Lucius. John D. Filippo. Playing Chiron. Ali Thresher. Playing Demetrius. Tyler Pardini. Playing Amelius. Lisboa. Playing Lavinia. Taylor Lynn. Playing Quintus. Maria Camilo. Playing Bas Basanius. Gassianus? Yes. yes. Liz, both. Sorry, Liz. That's Playing right. Mar Martius. 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 And, God and, and Publius? Yes. That's, that, that's Valerie O'Hara. Thank you, Valerie. Playing Mutius will be me as a voice. Yay! <laughs> Act one, scene one, Rome before the capital. The tomb of the Andronici appearing, the tribunes and senators aloft. Enter below from one side, Saturnius and his followers, and from the other side, Bassanius and his followers, with drum and colors. Noble patricians, patrons of my right, defend the justice of my cause with arms. And countrymen, my loving followers, plead my successive title with their swords. I am his firstborn son that was the last that wore the imperial diadem of Rome. Then let my father's honors live in me, nor wrong mine age with this indignity. Romans, friends, followers, favors of my right. If ever Bassianus, Caesar's son, were gracious in the eye of royal Rome, keep then this passage to the capital, and suffer not dishonor to approach the imperial seat. To virtue consecrate, to justice, continence, and nobility. But let desert in pure election shine, and Romans fight for freedom in your choice. And Demarcus Andronicus aloft with the crown. Princes that strive by factions and by friends, ambiguously of rule and empery, Know that the people of Rome, for whom we stand, a special party, have by common voice an election of the Roman emperor chosen Andronicus, surnamed Pius, for many good and great deserts to Rome. A nobler man, a braver warrior, lives not this day within the city walls. He by the Senate is as at home from weary wars against the barbarous Goths that with his sons, a terror to our foes, hath yoked a nation strong, trained up in arms. Ten years are spent since first he undertook this cause of Rome and chastised with arms our enemy's pride. Five times he has returned bleeding to Rome, bearing his valiant sons in coffins from the field. And now at last, laden with horror spoils, returns the good Andronicus to Rome. Renowned Titus, flourishing in arms, let us entreat by honor of his name, who worthy you would have now succeed. And in the capital and senate's right, whom you pretend to honor and adore, that you withdraw you and abate your strength. Dismiss your followers as suitors should, plead your deserts in peace and humbleness. How fair the tribune speaks to calm my thoughts. Marcus Andronicus, so I do Afi in my uprighteousness and integrity, and so I love and honor thee and thine, thy noble brother Titus and his sons, and her to whom my thoughts are humbled all, gracious Lavinia, Rome's rich ornament, that I will here dismiss my loving friends, and to my fortunes and the people's favor, commit my cause in balance to be weighed. It's in the follows of Bassanius. Friends that have been thus forward in my right, I thank you all and dismiss you all, and here dismiss you all, and to the love and favor of my country, commit myself, my person, and the cause. 
exhumed the followers of Saturninus, Rome. Rome, the, Rome be as just and gracious unto me as I am confident and kind to thee. Open the gates and let me in. Tribunes and me, a poor competitor. Flourished, Saturninus and Vassinius go up to the capital. Romans, make way. The good Andronicus, patron of virtue, Rome's best champion, successful in the battles that he fights with honor and with fortune is returned from where he circumscribed with his sword and brought to yoke the enemies of Rome. Drums and trumpets sounded, enter <clears throat> Marius and Mucius, after them two men bearing a coffin covered with black, then Lucius and Quintus after them, Titus Andronicus and then Tamora with her sons, Alarbus, Demetrius, Chiron, and then Aaron the Moor with other Goths and prisoners. Soldiers and people following, the bearers set down the coffin and Titus speaks. Hail Rome, victorious in thy morning. Lo, as the bark that hath a, from whence at first she weighed her anchorage, cometh Andronicus, bound with laurel boughs, to re-salute his country with his tears, tears of true joy for his return to Rome. Romans, of five and twenty valiant sons, behold, the poor remains alive and dead. Those that survive, let Rome reward with love. Those that I bring unto their latest home, with burial amongst their ancestors, make way to lay them by their brethren. They are greet in silence, as the dead are wont, and sleep in peace, slain in your country's wars. O sacred receptacle of my joys, sweet cell of virtue and nobility, how many sons of mine hast thou in store that thou wilt never render to do me more? Give us the proudest prisoner of the Goths, that we may hew his limbs, and on a pile, at manus fratrum, sacrifice his flesh before this earthy prison of their bones, that so the shadows be not unappeased, nor we disturbed with prodigies on earth. I give him you, the noblest that survives, the eldest son of that distressed queen. Nay, Roman brethren, gracious conqueror, victorious Titus, through the tears I shed, a mother's tears in passion for her son. And if thy sons were ever dear to thee, oh, think my son to be as dear to me. Suffice it not that we are brought to Rome to beautify thy triumphs and return captive to thee and to thy Roman yoke, but must my sons be slaughtered in the streets for valiant doings in their country's cause? Oh, if to fight for king and commonwealth were piety in thine, it is in these. Andronicus, Stain not thy tomb with blood. Wilt thou draw near the nature of the gods? Draw near them then in being merciful. Sweet mercy is nobility's true badge. Thrice, noble Titus, spare my firstborn son. Patient yourself, madam, and pardon me. These are their brethren whom few goths beheld, alive and dead, and for their brethren slain religiously, they ask a sacrifice. To this your son is marked, and die he must, to appease their groaning shadows that are gone. Away with him, and make a fire straight, and with our swords upon a pile of wood, let's hew his limbs to lady clean consumed. Oh, cruel irreligious piety! Alarbus goes to rest, and we survive to tremble under Titus's Titus's threatening look. Then, madam, stand resolved, but hope withal the selfsame gods that armed the queen of Troy with opportunity of sharp revenge upon my Pyrassian tyrant in his tent may favor Tamora, the queen of the Goths. When Goths were Goths and Tamora was queen, to quit the bloody wrongs upon her foes. See, lord and father, how we have performed our Roman rites. Alarbus' limbs are locked, and entrails feed the sacrificing fire, whose smoke like incense doth perfume the sky. For made it not but in, to inter our brethren, and with loud larums welcome them to Rome. Let it be so, and let Andronicus make this his latest farewell to their souls. Trumpet sound and the coffin laid in the tomb. 
In peace and honor rest you here, my sons. Rome's readiest champions repose you here and rest. Secure from worldly chances and mishaps, here lurks no treason, here no envy swells, here grow no damned grudges, here are no storms, no noise, but silence and eternal sleep. In peace and honor rest you here, my sons. Enter Lavinia. In peace and honor live Lord Titus long. My noble lord and father, live in fame. Lo, at this too my tributary tears, I render for my brethren's obsequies, and at thy feet I kneel, with tears of joy shed on the earth for thy return to Rome. Oh, bless me here with thy victorious hand, whose fortunes Rome's best citizens applaud. Kind Rome, that hast thus lovingly reserved the cordial of mine age to glad my heart. Lavinia, live! Outlive thy father's days, and firms etern fame's eternal date for virtue's praise. Long live Lord Titus, my beloved brother, gracious trumpeter, trumpeter in the eyes of Rome. Thanks, gentle tribune, noble brother Marcus. And welcome nephews from successful wars. You that survive and you that sleep in fame, Titus Andronicus, the people of Rome, whose friend in justice you have hast ever been, send thee by me thy, their tribune and their trust, their parliament of white and spotless hue, and name thee an election for the empire with these our late deceased emperor's sons. Be Canada's then, and put it on, and help to set a head on headless Rome. <laughs> a better head her glorious body fits than his that shakes for age and feebleness. What, should I don this robe and trouble you? Be chosen with proclamations today. Tomorrow yield up rule, resign my life, and set abroad new business for you all. Rome, I have been thy soldier 40 years, and led my country's strength successfully, and buried one and 20 valiant sons in right and service to their noble country. Give me a staff of honor for my age, but not a scepter to control the world. People of Rome and, and people's tribunes here, I ask your voices and your suffrages. Will you build, bestow them friendly on Andronicus? To gratify the good Andronicus and congratulate his safe return to Rome, the people will accept whom he admits. Tribune, I thank you. And this suit I make, that you create your impostor's eldest emperor's eldest son, Lord Saturnine, whose virtues will, I hope, reflect on Rome as titans raise on earth and ripen justice in this commonweal. Then if you elect by my advice, crown him and say, long live our emperor. Voices and applaud of every sort. Patricians, plebeians, we create Lord Senatus, Rome's great emperor, and say, long live our emperor, Saturnine. A long flourish till Saturninus and Bassanius with guards come down. Titus Andronicus, for thy favor done to us in our election this day, I give thee thanks in part of thy desert, deserts, and will with deeds requite thy gentleness. And for an onset, Titus, to advance thy name in honorable family, Lavinia will I make my empress, Rome's royal mistress, mistress of my heart and in the sacred pantheon her espouse. But tell me, Andronicus, does this motion please thee? It doth, my worthy lord, and in this match I hold me highly honored by your grace, and here in sight of Rome to Saturnine, king and commander of our common wheel, the wide world's emperor, do I consecrate my sword, my chariot, and my prisoners. Prese presence well worthy, Rome's imperial lord. Receive them then, the tribute that I owe, mine honors and ensigns, humbled at thy feet. Thanks, noble Titus, father of my life. How proud I am of thee and of thy gifts, Rome shall record. And when I do forget the least of these unspeakable deserts, Romans forget your fealty to me. Now, madam, are you prisoner to an emperor to tell him that for your honor and your state, 
will use you nobly and your followers? A goodly lady, trust me, of the hue that I would choose were I to choose anew. Mm, clear up, fair queen, that cloudy, cloudy countenance. Though chance of war hath wrought this change of cheer, thou comest not to be made a scorn in Rome. Princely shall be thy usage in e thy usage every way. Rest on my word and let not discontent daunt all your hopes. Romans, let us go. Ransomless here we set our prisoners free. Proclaim our honors, lords, with trump and drum. Flourish, Saturninus and his guards exit with drums and trumpets. Tribunes and senators exit aloft. Bassanius seizing Lavinia by the arm. Um. Two forty. Yes, I. I don't know. Um, this is. I'm sorry. That this is. Just, I have a different. I have a different text or something. Are you um, using the one we sent or a different one? Yeah, I, I can't. Um, sorry, I've got it. Uh, sorry. Okay. Um, I believe this maid is mine. No, sir. Are you in earnest then, my lord? I, noble Titus, and resolved withal to do myself this reason and this right. Beneath is our Roman justice. This prince in justice seeth but his own. And that he will and shall, if Lucius live. Traitors, avaunt! Where is the emperor's guard? Treason! My lord, Lavinia is surprised. Surprised by whom? By him that justly may bear his betrothed from all the world away. Brothers, help to convey her hence away, and with my sword I'll keep the door safe. Follow my lord, and I'll soon bring her back. My lord, you pass not here. What, villain boy? Forest my way in Rome? He stares, yeah. Mucius. Help, Lucius, help! Mucius, Mucius dies. Enter Lucius. My lord, you are unjust and more than so. In wrongful quarrel, you have slain your son. Nor thou, nor he are any sons of mine. My sons would never so dishonor me. Traitor, restore Lavinia to the emperor. Dead if if you will, but not to be his wife. That is another's lawful promised love. No, Titus, no, the emperor needs her not, nor her, nor thee, nor any of thy stock. I'll trust by leisure him that mocks me once. Thee never, nor thy traitorous haughty sons, confederates all thus to dishonor me. Oh, monstrous, what reproachful words are these? Ah, but go thy ways. Go give that changing peace to him that flourished for her with his sword. A valiant son-in-law thou shalt enjoy, one fit to bandy with thy lawless sons to ruffle in the commonwealth of Rome. These raids are, these words are razors to my wounded heart. And therefore, lovely Tamara, queen of Goths, that like the stately Phoebe amongst her nifstas overshine the gallantest dames of Rome, if thou be pleased with this my sudden choice, behold, I choose thee, Tamara, for my bride, and will create thee Empress of Rome. Speak, Queen of Gods, dost thou applaud my choice? And here I swear by all Roman gods, if priest and holy water are so near, and tapers burn so bright, and everything in readiness for Hymenaeus stand. I will not resalute the streets of Rome or climb my palace till from forth this place I lead espoused my bride along with me. And here in inside of heaven to Rome, I swear, the Saturday in advance, the queen of Goths 
she will be a handmaid be to his desires, a loving nurse, a mother to his youth. Ascend, fair queen, pantheon, lords, accompany your noble emperor and his lovely bride, sent by the heavens for Prince Saturnine, whose wisdom hath her fortune conquered. There shall we consummate our spousal right. I am not bid to wait upon his this bride? Titus, when wouldst thou want to walk alone, dishonored thus, and challenged of, of wrongs? O oh, Titus, see, O oh, see what thou, thou hast done in a bad quarrel slain, a virtuous son. No, foolish tribune, no, no son of mine. My, my foes, I do repute you every one. So trouble me no more, but get you gone. But let us give him burial as becomes. Give Mutius burial with our brethren. Traitors, away! He rests not in this tomb, this monument 500 years hath stood, which I have sumptuously re-edified. Here none but soldiers and Rome servitors repose in fame. None basely slawn and brawls. Bury him where you can. He comes not here. My lord, this is impiety in you. My nephew Mutius, deeds do plead for him. He must be buried with his brethren. And shall. Or him we will accompany. And shall? What villain was it that spoke, spake that word? He that would vouch it at any place but here. What, would you bury him in my despite? No, Nabal Titus, but entreat of thee to pardon Mightius and to bury him. Marcus? Even thou hast struck upon my chest, and with these boys mine honor thou hast wounded. My foes I do refute you every one, so trouble me no more, but get you gone. Brother, for in that name doth nature plead. Father, and in that name doth nature speak. Speak thou no more, if all the rest will speed. Redown Titus, more than half my soul. Dear father, soul and substance of us all. Suffer thy brother Marcus to inter his noble nephew here in virtue's nest that died in honor and Lavidia's cause. Thou art a Roman, be not barbarous. The Greeks upon advice did bury Ajax that slew himself, and wise Laertes' son did graciously plead for his funerals. Let not young Mutius then, that was thy joy, be barred from his entrance here. Rise, Marcus, rise. This dismal, dismal this day is, all, is, is that I, I saw. To be dishonored by my sons in Rome, well, bury him and bury me the next. There lie thy bones, sweet Mutius, with thy friends, so we with trophies do adorn thy tomb. No man shed tears for noble Mutius, he lives in fame that died in virtue's cause. My lord, to step out of these dreary dumps, how comes it that the subtle queen of Goths is a, a sudden thus advanced in Rome? I know not, Marcus, but I know it is. Whether by device or no, the heavens can tell. Is she not then beholden to the man that brought her for this high good turn so far? Yes, and will nobly him remunerate. So, Bassanius, you have played your prize. God give you joy, sir, of your gallant bride. And you of yours, my lord. I say no more, nor wish no less, so I take my leave. Traitor, if Rome have law or we have power, thou and thy faction shall repent this rape. Rape? Call you it, my lord? To seize my own, my true betrothed love, and now my wife? But let the laws of Rome determine all. Meanwhile, am I possessed of that is mine? Tis good, sir, you are very short with us. But if we live, we'll be as sharp with you my lord 
What I have done, as best I may, answer I must, and shall do with my life. Only thus much I give your grace to know. By all the duties that I owe to Rome, this noble gentleman, Lord Titus here, is in opinion and in honor wronged, that in the rescue of Lavinia with his own hand did slay his youngest son, in zeal to you and highly moved to wrath to be controlled in that he frankly gave. Receive him then to favor, Saturnine, that hath expressed himself in all his deeds, a father and a friend to thee and Rome. Prince Bastianus, leave to plead my deeds. Tis thou and those that have dishonored me. Rome and the righteous heavens be my judge, how I have loved and honored Saturnine. My worthy lord, if ever Tamra were gracious in those princely eyes of thine, then hear me speak in indifferently for all, and at my suit, sweet, pardon what is past. What, madam, be dishonored openly, and basely put it up without revenge? Not so, my lord. The gods of Rome forfend I should be author to dishonor you, but on mine honor dare I undertake for good Lord Titus's innocence in all, whose fury not dissembled speaks his griefs. Then look at my suit graciously on him. Lose not so noble a friend on vain suppose, or with sour looks afflict his gentle heart. My lord, be ruled by me, be one at last. Dissemble all your griefs and discontents. You are but newly planted in your throne. Less than the people and patricians too upon a just survey take Titus part, and so supplant you for ingratitude which Rome reputes to be a heinous sin. Yield at entreats and then let me alone. I'll find a day to massacre them all and raise their faction and their family. The cruel father and his traitorous sons, to whom I sued for my dear son's life and make them know what tis to let a queen kneel in the streets and beg for grace in vain. Come, come, sweet emperor, come, Andronicus. Take up this good old man and cheer the heart that dies in tempest of thy angry frown. Rise, Titus, rise. My empress hath prevailed. I thank your majesty and her, my lord. These words, these looks, infuse new life in me. Titus, I am incorporate in Rome, a Roman now adopted happily, and must advise the emperor for his good. This day all quarrels die, Andronicus, and let it be mine honor, good my lord, that I have reconciled your friends and you. For you, Prince Bassianus, I have passed my word and promised to the emperor that you will be more mild and tractable, and fear not lords. And you, Lavinia, by my advice, all humbled on your knees, you shall ask pardon of his majesty. We do, and vow to heaven and to his highness that what we did was mildly as we might, tendering our sister's honor and our own. And on my honor here, I do protest. Away, and talk not. Trouble us no more. Nay, nay, sweet emperor, we must all be friends. The tribune and his nephews kneel for grace. I will not be denied. Sweetheart, look back. Marcus, for thy sake and thy brothers here, and at my lovely Tamara's entreats, I do remit these young men's heinous fault. Stand up. Lavinia, though you left me like a churl, I found a friend, and sure as death I swore I would not part a bachelor from the priest. Come. If the Emperor's court can feast two hides, you are my guest, Lavinia, and your friends. This day shall be a love day, Tamara. Tomorrow, and it please your majesty to hunt the panther and the hart with me, with horn and hound, will give you your grace. Bonjour. Be it so, Titus, and Gramercy too. Flourish, all exit. Act two, scene one. Rome before the palace. Enter Aaron. Now climbeth tomorrow Olympus top, safe out of fortune's shot, and sit aloft secure in thunder's crack or lightning's flash, advanced above pale envy's threatening reached, as when the golden sun salutes the morn. 
and having glit the ocean and his beams gallops the zodiac in his glistening coach and overlooks the highest peering hills. <sighs> so tomorrow. Upon her wit doth early on her wait, and virtue stops and trembles at her, at her frown. Then Aaron, arm thy heart and fit thy thoughts to mount aloft with thy imperial mistress and mount her pitch with whom thy in triumph long hath prisoner held, fettered in armor's, armor's chains and fester bound to Aaron's charming eyes. This is Prometheus tied to C Cassius. Away with slavish weed and servile thoughts. I will be bright and shine in pearl and good to wait upon this new made queen empress. To wait, said I, to want with this queen, this goddess, this Ceremonius, this nymph, this uh, uh, siren that will charm Rome, Saturnine, and see his shipwreck and his common wheels. Hola, what storm is this? Chiron, thy tears want wit, thy wit wants edge and manners, to intrude where I am graced and may, for aught thou knowest, affected to be. Demetrius, thou dost overween in all, and so in this to bear me down with praise. Tis not the difference of a year or two makes me less gracious or thee more fortunate. I am as able and as fit as thou to serve and to deserve my mistress's grace and that my sword upon thee shall approve and plead my passions for Lavinia's love. These lovers will not keep the peace. Why, boy, although our mother, unadvised, gave you a dancing rapier by your side, are you so desperate grown to threat your friends? Go to, have your laugh glued within your sheath till you know better how to handle it. Ah. In well, sir, with the little skill I have, Full well shalt thou perceive how much I dare. Ay, boy, grow you so brave. Ay, how now, lords? So near the Empress' palace dare you draw and maintain such a quarrel openly? Full well I walk the ground of all this charge. I would not for a million of gold the cause were known of them it most concerns, nor would you, your no mother, for much more be so dishonored in the court of Rome. For shame, put it up. Not I, till I have sheathed my rapier in his bosom, and withal trust, uh, thrust these reproachful speeches down his throat that he hath breathed in my dishonor here. For that I am prepared with full resolve, foul-spoken coward, that thunderest with thy tongue, and with thy weapon nothing darest perform. Away, I say, now, by the gods that warlike goth adore, this petty brabble will undo us all. Why, lords, and think you not how dangerous it is just upon a prince's right? What is Lavinia that comes so loose, or Bastianus so degenerate, that for her love such quarrels may be broached, without controlment, justice, or revenge? Young lords, beware. And should the empress know this discord ground? The music would not please. I care not. I knew she and all the world. I love Lavinia more than all the world. Youngling, learn thou to make some meaner choice. Lavinia is thine elder brother's hope. Why are you mad? Or know you not in Rome how furious and patient they be? And cannot brook comp competitor in love? I tell you, lords, you but plot your deaths by this device. Aaron, a thousand deaths would I propose to achieve her whom I love. To achieve her, how? Why makes thou it so strange? She is a woman, therefore may be wooed. She is a woman, therefore may be won. She is Lavinia, therefore must be loved. What man more water glowed by the mill than wots the miller of, than easy is of a cut loaf of steel a shiv? We know. Though Bassianus be the emperor's brother, better than he have worn Vulcan's badge. Aye, and as good as such a nice may. And why should he despair that knows to court it with words, fair looks, and liberality? What, mm -hmm. hast not thou full often struck a doe and borne her cleanly by the keeper's nose? Why then, it seems, some certain snatch or so would serve your turn. 
Aaron, thou hast hit it. You would have hit it too. <laughs> thou should not we be tired with this ado. Why hark you, hark you? And are you such fools to square for this? Would it offend you? Then that both should be speed. Then that both should speed. Please, not me. Nor me. So I are one. For shame, be friends, and join for that you jar. Tis policy and strategium must do that you effect. So must you resolve that you cannot as you would achieve. You must perforce accomplishments as you may. Take this of me. Luis was not more chaste than this Lavinia. Back on his love, a speedier course than a lingering languishment. Must we pursue? And if I have found the path, my lords, a solemn hunting is at hand. There will be this lovely woman lady's troop. The forests rock are wide and spacious, and many unfrequented plots there are, fitted by a kind for rape and villainy. Single you thither than this dainty doe, and strike her home by force, if not by word. Oh. This way or not at all, stand you in hope. Come, come. I am in our sacred weight to villainy and vengeance and vengeance consecrate. We will acquaint with all that we attend, and we shall file our, and we shall file our engines with advice that will not suffer you to square yourselves. But to your wishes I'd advance you both. Emperor's court is like a house of flame. The palace full of tongues, of eyes and ears. The woods are ruthless, dreadful, deaf and dull. There speak and strike, brave boys, and take your turn. <laughs> their serve you lust shadowed from heaven's eye and revel in Lavanya's treasures. Treasuries. Thy counsel, lad, smells of no cowardice. Set fast at defus, till I find the stream to cool this heat, a charm to calm these fits, per stiga, per manis vehor. Oh, exit. Scene two. A forest near Rome. Horns and cry of hounds are heard. Enter Titus Andronicus with Marcus, Lucius, Quintus, and Mar Martius, making noise with horns and hounds. The hunt is up. The morn is bright and gray. The fields are fragrant and the woods are green. Uncouple here and let us make a bay and wake the emperor and his lovely bride. And rouse the prince and ring a, a hunter's peal that all the court may echo within the noise. Sons. Let it be your charge, as it is ours, to attend the emperor's person carefully. Uh, I've been troubled in my sleep this night, but dawning day new comfort hath inspired. Oh! Many good morrows to your majesty. Madam, to you as many and as good. I promise your grace a hunter's peal. And you have rung it lustily, my lord. Somewhat too early for new married ladies. Lavinia, how say you? Wait, wait, wait. Come on then. Horse and chariots let us have, and to our sport. Madam, now shall you see our Roman hunting. I have dogs, my lord. Arouse the proudest partner in the chase and climb the highest promontory to the top. And I have horse will follow where the game makes the way and run like swallows o'er the plain. Chiron, we hunt not we with horse nor hound, but hope to plunk a dainty dough to ground. Ooh, exit. Scene three, a lonely part of the forest. Enter Aaron alone, carrying a bag of gold. He that had wit think I had none. Buried so much gold under a tree, and never after to inherit it. Let him that thinks of me so objectively know that this gold must a coin stratagem, which cunningly effective will beget a very excellent piece of villainy. He hides the gold. And so repose, sweet gold, for their unrest they have their arms out on the emperor's chest. Emperor's chest. My lovely Aaron, wherefore thou look so sad when everything doth make a gleeful boast? The birds chant melody on every bush, the snake lies rolled in the cheerful sun, the green leaves quiver with the cooling wind and make a checkered shadow on the ground under their sweet, sweet shade. Aaron, let us sit, and whilst the babbling echo mock the hounds, replying shrilly to the well-tuned horns, let us sit and mark their yelping noise. 
we may each read it in each other's arms our pastime done possess a golden slumber whilst hounds and horns and sweet melodious birds be unto us as the nurse song of lullaby to bring her babe asleep madam though venus govern your desires saturn is dominator of our mind vengeance in my heart death in my hand blood and revenge are hammering in my head Hark tomorrow, the empress of my soul, which never hopes more heaven than rest in thee. This is the day of doom for Asianus. His femomal must lose her tongue today. Thy sons make pillage of her chastity and wash their hands in Bassianus' blood. See this letter? Take it, I pray thee, and give the king this flated potted scroll. Now question me no more. We are speed, we are spied. Here comes a parcel of our hopeful boot, which dreads not yet their dear lives' destruction. Ah, oh, my sweet moor, sweeter to me than life. No more, great empress, Bessianus comes. Be cross with them, and I'll go fetch thy sons to back thy curl, whatsoever they be. Who have we here? Rome's royal empress, unfurnished of her well beseemingly troop? Or is it Diane? Habited like her, who hath abandoned her holy groves to see the general hunting in this forest. Saucy controller of our private steps. Had I the power that some say Diane had, thy temple should be planted presently with horn, as was Acton's, and the hounds should drive upon thy newly transformed limbs, unmanly intruder as thou art. Mm. <laughs> Under your patience, gentle empress, tis thought you have a goodly gift in horning. And to be down to that you, your moor and you, are singled forth to try experiments. Jove, shield your husband from his hounds today. Tis pity they should take him for a stag. Believe me, queen, your, your swarthy chimerian doth make you honor of his body's hue, spotted, detested, and abominable. Why are you sequestered from all your train, dismounted from your snow-white godly steed? and wandered hither to an obscure plot, accompanied but with a barbarous moor, if foul desire had not conducted you. And being intercepted in your sport, great reason that my noble lord be rated for sauciness. I pray you, let us hence, and let her joy her raven-colored love. This valley fits the purpose, passing well. The king, my brother, shall have notice of this, I, for these slip have made him noted long. Good king, to be so mightily abused. Why have I patience to endure all this? Uh, oh now, dear sovereign, and our gracious mother, why doth your highness look so pale and wan? Have I not reason, think you, to look pale? These two have ticed me hither to this place. A barren, detested veil, you see it is. Here never shines the sun, here nothing breathes unless the nightly owl or fatal raven. And when they showed me this abhorred pit, they told me, here at dead time of the night, a thousand fiends, a thousand hissing snakes, 10,000 swelling toads, as many urchins, would make such fearful and confused cries as any mortal body hearing it should fall straight mad, or else die suddenly. No sooner had they told me this hellish tale, but straight they told me they would bind me here unto the body of a dismal you and leave me to this miserable death. And then they called me foul adulteress, lascivious goth, and all the bitterest terms that ever ear did hear to such effect. And had you not by this wondrous fortune come, this vengeance on me had they executed. Revenge it as you love your mother's life, or be you not henceforth called my children. This is a witness that I am thy son. And oh. this for me struck home to show my strength. They stab the Sanius until he dies. Oh, I come, Semiramis. Nay, barbarous Tamara, for no knife fits thy nature but thy own. Ah, give me thy poignard. You shall know, my boys, your mother's hand shall right your mother's wrong. Stay, madam. Here is more belongs to her. First thrash the corn, then burn the straw. This minion stood upon her chastity, upon her nuptial vow, her loyalty, and with that painted hope braves your mightiness. And shall she carry this unto her grave? If she do, I would I were an eunuch. Drag hence her husband to some secret hole, and make his dead trunk pillow to our lust. But 
When you have the honey you desire, let not this wasp outlive us both to sting. I warrant you, madam, we will, I make that sure. Come, mistress, now perforce we will enjoy that nice preserved honesty of yours. Oh, Emma, now bear us the woman's cheese. I will not hear her speak. Away with her. Sweet lord, entreat her, hear me but a word. Listen, fair madam, let it be your glory to see her tears, but be our heart to them as unrelenting flints to drops of rain. When do the tiger's young ones teach the dam? Oh, do not learn her wrath. She taught it me. The milk thou suckest from her did turn to marble. Even thy teeth still had thy tyranny. Yet every mother breeds not sons alike. Do thou entreat her show a woman pity? What? Wouldst thou have me prove myself a bastard? It's true. The raven doth not hatch a lark. Yet have I heard. Oh, could I find it now? The lion, moved with pity, did endure to have his princely paws pared away. Some say that ravens foster forlorn children, the whilst their own bird vanish in their nests. No, be to me. Though thy hard heart say no, nothing so kind but something pitiful. I know not what that means. Away with her. Oh, I teach thee for my father's sake that gave thee life when well he might have slain thee. Be not obdurate, open thy deaf ears. Hast thou in person ne'er offended me? Even for his sake am I pitiless. Remember, boys, I poured forth tears in vain to save your brother from the sacrifice, but fierce Andronicus would not relent. Therefore, away with her, and use her as you will. The worse to her, the better loved of me. Oh, Tamara. Be called a gentle queen, and with thy own, thine own hands give me in this place, for tis not life that I have begged so long, for I was slain when Bastianus died. What beggest thou then? Fond woman, let me go. To present death I beg, and one thing more that womanhood denies my tongue to tell. Keep me from their worse than killing lust, and tumble me into some loathsome pit. Where never man I may behold my body, do this, and be a charitable murderer. So should I rob my sweet sons of their fee? No, let them satisfy their lust on thee. Away, for thou hast stayed us here too long. Great, no womanhood. Oh, beastly creature, the blot and ending to our general name, confusion all. Nay, then I'll stop your mouth. Bring thou her husband. This is the hole where Aaron bid us hide him. Demetrius throws the body of Pisanius into the pit, then exits Demetrius and Chiron, dragging off Lavinia. Farewell, my sons. See that you make her sure. Never let my heart no merry cheer indeed till all the Andronici be made away. Now I will, well, now will I hence seek my lovely moor and let my spleenful sons this troll deflower. Exit to Mora, we enter Aaron with Quintus and Marius. Come on, my lords, the better foot for, straight will I bring you to the loathsome pit where I spied the panther fast asleep. Sight is very dull, whatever it bodes. And mine, I promise you, were it not for shame, well could I have our sport to sleep a while. Martius <laughs> falls into the pit. <gasps> what? Art thou fallen? What subtle hole is this? Whose mouth is covered with rude growing briars? Upon those leaves are drops of new shed blood as fresh as morning dew distilled on flowers? Very fatal place it seems to be. Speak, brother, hast thou hurt thee with the fall? Oh, brother with the dismalest object heard that ever I with sight made heart lament. Now will I fetch the king to find them here, and that thereby may give a likely bless how these were that made away with his, away his brother. Why dost thou not comfort me and help me out from this unhallowed and blood-stained hole? I am surprised with an uncouth fear. A, a chilling sweat runs my trembling joints. My heart suspects more than my eyes can see. To prove thou hast a true divining heart, Aaron, and thou should 
but look down into this den and see a fearful sight of blood and death. Aaron is gone, and my compassionate heart will not permit mine eyes once to behold the thing where it trembles by surmise. Oh, tell me who it is, for ne'er till now was I a child to fear I know not what. Lord, Sianus lies betrayed here, uh, uh, all on a heap like a slaughtered lamb in this devastated, in this detested dark blood-stained pit upon his body finger he doth wear a precious ring that lingers all the whole which, which oh, sorry upon upon his bloody finger he doth wear a precious ring that lightens all the whole which like a taper in some monument doth shine upon the dead man's earthly cheeks and shows the ragged entrails of the pit oh brother help me with thy fainting hand if Fear hath made thee faint as it hath, as me it hath, out of this fell devouring receptacle. Reach my, reach me thy hand, and that I may help thee out. Ugh, I have no strength but to pluck thee from the brink. Quintus falls in. Enter Saturninus with attendants and Aaron. Along with me, we'll see what hole is here, and what he is that now is leaped. Sure. Say, who art thou that lately did descend into this gaping hollow of the earth? The unhappy son of old Andronicus brought hither in a most unlucky hour to find thy brother Bassianus dead. My brother dead? I owe thou dost but jest. He, he and his lady both are at the lodge on the north side of this pleasant chase. Tis not an hour since I left him there. We know not where you left them all alive, but how, alas, here have we found him dead. Where is my lord the king? Here, Tamara, though grouped with killing grief. Where is thy brother Bassianus? Now to the bottom dost thou assert my wound. Poor Bassianus, here lies murdered. Then all too late I bring this fatal writ, the complot of this timeless tragedy, and wonder greatly that man's face can fold in pleasing smiles such murderous tyranny. And if we miss to meet him handsomely, sweet huntsman, Bassianus, tis we mean, do thou so much as dig the grave for him, thou knowest our meaning. Look for thy reward amongst the nettles at the elder tree, which overshades the mouth of that same pit where we decreed to bury Bassianus. Do this and purchase us thy lasting friends. Oh, Tamara, was ever heard the like? This is the pit and, and this the elder tree. Look, sirs, if you can find the huntsman out that should have murdered Bassanius here. My gracious lord, here's the bag of gold. Two of thy wealth, fell curs of bloody kind, here bereft my brother of his life. Sirs, drag them from the pit unto the prison. There let them bide until we have devised some never heard of torturing pen for them. What? Are they in this pit? A wondrous thing, how easily murder is discovered. I am her, upon my feeble knee, I beg this boon. She is not likely shed, that this shall fall of my accursed sons, accursed if the fault be proved in them. If it be proved, you see it is apparent. Who found this letter? Tamara, was it you? Andronicus himself did take it up. I, I did, my lord, yet let me be their bail. For by my father's reverend to my vow, they shall be ready at your highness's will to answer their suspicion with their lives. Thou shalt not fail them. See thou follow me. Some, some bring the murdered body and the murderers. Let them not speak a word. The guilt is plain. For by my soul were there worse end than death 
that end upon them should be executed. Andronicus, I will entreat the king. Fear not thy sons. They shall do well enough. Come, Lucius, come. Stay not to talk with them. All exit. Scene four, another part of the forest. Enter Demetrius and Chiron with Lavinia, ravished, her hands cut off, and her tongue cut out. Oh. So, now go tell, and if thy tongue can speak, who t'was that cut thy tongue and ravished thee? Write down thy mind, bewray thy meaning so, and if thy stumps will let thee play scribe. See how with signs and tokens she can scrawl. Go home, call the sweet water, wash thy hands. She has no tongue to call nor hands to wash, so let's leave her to her silent walks. And for my case, I should go hang myself. If thou hadst hands to help thee knit the cord. Ooh. Who is this? My niece that flies away so fast? Cousin, a word. Where is your husband? If I do dream, would all my wealth would wake me. If I do wake, some planet strike me down that I may slumber in eternal sleep. Speak. Gentle niece, what stern on gentle hands of lopped and hewed, and make thy body bare of her two branches? Why dost not speak to me? A crimson river of warm blood, like to a bubbling fountain stirred with wind, doth rise and fall between those rose lips, coming and going with a honey breath. Be sure some terrace hath deflowered thee. At least thou shalt detect him. Cut thy tongue. Ah, oh, now thou turnst away thy face for shame. And notwithstanding all this loss of blood, yet do thy cheeks look red as Titan's face, blushing to be encountered with a cloud. Shall I speak for thee? Shall I say tis so? Oh, that I knew thy heart and knew thy beast, that I might rail at him to ease my mind. Come, let us go and make thy father blind, for such a sight will blind the father eye. Once our storm will drown the fragment meads, what will hold months of tears thy father's eyes? Do not go back, for we will mourn with thee. Oh, could our mourning ease thy misery? Hear me, grave fathers, noble tribunes, stay for pity of mine age, whose youth was spent in dangerous wars whilst you securely slept. For all my blood in Rome's great quarrel shed, for all the frosty nights that I have watched, and for these bitter tears which now you see, filling the aged wrinkles in my cheeks, pitiful to my condemned sons, whose souls are not corrupted as this thought, for two and twenty. Twenty sons I never wept because they died in honor's lofty bed. For these tribunes, in the dust I write, my heart deep languor and my soul sad tears. Let my tears staunch earth's dry appetite. My son's sweet blood will make it shame and blush. Oh, earth, I will friend thee more with rain that shall distill from these two ancient ruins than youthful April shall with all his showers. In summer's drought, I'll drop thee upon thee still. In winter, with warm tears, I'll melt the snow and keep eternal springtime on thy face so thou refuse to drink my dear son's blood. O oh, reverend tribunes, O oh, gentle aged men, unbind my sons. Reverse the doom of death and let me say that never went before. My tears are now prevailing orators. Noble father, you lament in vain. The tribunes hear you not. No man is by. And you recount your sorrows to a stone. Why, tis no matter, man. If they did hear, they would not mark me. If they did mark, they would not pity me. Yet plead I must. 
Therefore, I tell my sorrows to the stones, who though they cannot answer my distress, yet in some sort they are better than the tribunes. When I do weep, they humbly at my feet receive my tears and seem to weep with me. And they were but attired in grave weeds. Rome could afford no tribute like to these. A stone as soft as wax, tribunes more hard than stones. A stone is silent and defendeth not, and tribunes with their tongues doom men to death. Wherefore stands thou with thy weapon drawn? To rescue my two brothers from their death, for which attempt the judges have pronounced my everlasting doom of banishment. Oh, happy man, they have befriended thee. What foolish Lucius, must thou not perceive that Rome is but a wilderness of tigers? Tigers must pray, and Rome affords no prey but me and mine. How happy art thou then from these devourers to be banished? But who comes with our brother Marcus here? I just prepare thou right aged eyes to weep, or if not so thy noble heart to break, I bring consuming sorrow to thine age. Let consume me, let me see then. This was thy daughter. My Marcus, so she is. Ay, me, this object kills me. Faint-hearted boy, arise and look upon her. Speak, Lavinia. What cursed hand hath made thee handless in thy father's sight? What fool hath added water to the sea? My grief was at the height before thou camest. And thou, like Nihilus, it disdaineth bounds. Give me a sword. I'll chop off my hands, too. For they have fought for Rome in all in vain, and they have nursed this woe in feeding life. In bootless prayer have they been held up, and they have served me to an effectless use. Now all the service I require of them is that the one will help to cut the other. Speak, gentle sister, who hath martyred thee? Oh, that the delightful engine of her thoughts that have them with such pleasing eloquence is torn from forth that pretty hollow page. Oh, save thou for her, who hath done this deed? Oh, thus I found her straying in the park, seeking to hide herself, that doth the deer that hath received some unrecurring wound. It was my deer, and he that woundeth her hath hurt me more than he had killed me dead. This way to death my wretched sons are gone. Here stay my other son a banished man, and here my brother weeping at my woes. But which gives my soul the greatest spurn, is dear Lavinia, for than my soul. Had I but seen thy picture in this plight, it would have maddened me. What shall I do now I behold thy lovely body so? Thou oh, hast no hands to wipe away my tears, no tongue to tell me who the mother thee. Thy husband, he is dead, and for his death thy brothers are condemned to die by this. Look, Marcus, oh, son Lucius, look on her. When I did name her brothers, then fresh tears stood on her cheeks. And she weeps because they killed her husband, perchance because she knows them innocent. If they did kill thy husband, then be joyful, because the law hath taken revenge on them. Oh no, they would not do so foul a deed. Witness the sorrow that their sister makes. Oh no, the gentle Lavinia. Let me kiss thy lips and make some sign how I may do thee ease. Shall thy good uncle and thy brother Lucius, shall we cut away our hands like thine? Or shall we bite our tongues in a dumb shows, pass the remainder of our evil days? What shall we do? Let us that have our tongues plot some deuce of further misery to make us wonder that in time to come. Sweet father, cease your tears. For our grief, see how my wretched sister sobs eats. Patience, dear niece. Good Titus, dry thine eyes. Titus Andronicus, my lord, emperor, sends thee this word, that if thou love thy sons, that Marcus, Lucius, or thyself, old Titus, or any of you, 
chop off your hand and send it to the king. He for the same will send thee hither both thy sons alive. And that shall be the ransom for their fault. O oh, gracious emperor, O oh, gentle Aaron, did ever raven sing so like a lark that gives sweet tidings of the sun's uprise? With all my heart, I'll send the emperor my hand. Good Aaron, wilt thou help to chop it off? Stay, father, for that noble hand of thine that hath thrown down so many enemies shall be not sent. My hand will serve the turn. My youth can better spare my blood than you, and therefore mine shall save my brother's lives. Which of your hands hath not defended Rome and reared aloft the bloody battle axe, riding destruction on the enemy's castle? Oh, no, no, flower of high desert, my hand hath been but idle. Let it serve to ransom my two nephews from their death. Then have I it to be a worthy end. Nay, come, agree whose hands I'll go long, uh, for fear they die before their pardon come. My hand shall go. By heaven it shall not go. Sir, strive no more. Such withered herbs as these are meat for plucking up, and therefore mine. Sweet father, if I shall be taught thy son, let me redeem my brothers both from death. And for our father's sake and mother's care, now let me show a brother's love to thee. Agree between you, I will spare my hand. Then I'll go fetch an axe. But I will use the axe. Come, hither, Aaron, I'll deceive them both. Lend me thy hand and I'll give thee mine. If this be called deceit, I will be honest and never was I ever deceive men so. But I'll deceive you in another sport, and that you'll say ere half an hour pass. <laughs> Ah. Now stay your strife, what shall be is dispatched. Good Aaron, give his majesty my hand. Tell him it was a hand that warded him from a thousand dangers. Bid him bury it, more hath it merited, let it have as much. As for my sons, say I account of them as jewels purchased at an easy price, and yet dear too, because I brought mine own. I go, Andronicus, and for thy hand, look by and by to have thy sons with thee. Their heads, I mean. Oh, oh this is villainy, thou fat with me, the very thoughts of it. Let fools good and fair men call their grace. Aaron will have his soul black like his face. Oh, here I live this one hand up to heaven, and bow this feeble ruin to the earth. If any power pipe these wretched tears, to that I call. What? Will thou kneel with me? Oh, do then, dear heart, for heaven shall hear our prayers. Or with our sighs will breathe the welkin dim, and strain, stain the sun with fog, as sometimes clouds, when they do hug him in their melting bosoms. O oh, brother, speak with possibility, and do not break into these deep extremes. Is not my sorrow deep, having no bottom? Then be my passions bottomless with them. But yet let reason govern thy lament. If there were reason for these miseries, then into limits could I bind my woes. When heaven doth weep, doth not the earth o'erflow? If the winds rage, doth not the sea wax mad, threatening the welcome with a big swollen face? And wilt thou have a reason for this spoil? And the sea, hark how her sighs do flow. She is the weeping welkin, I the earth. Then must my sea be moved with her sighs. Then must my earth with her continual tears. Then become a deluge, overflowed and drowned. For why my bowels cannot hide our woes? But like a drunkard must I vomit them. And then give me leave, for whose is <laughs> leave to ease the stomachs with their bitter tongues? <coughs> Worthy Andronicus, ill art thou repaid for that good hand thou sentest the emperor. Here are the heads of thy two noble sons. And here's thy hand in scorn to thee sent back. 
Thy griefs their sport, thy resolution mocked, that woe is me to think upon thy woes. In my heart in ever burning hell, these miseries are more than may be born to weep with them, that weep doth ease some deal, sorrow flouted at his double death. Ah, that this sight should not make so deep a wound, and yet detested life not shrink thereat. That ever death should let life bear his name, where life hath no more interest but to breathe. When will this fearful slumber have end? Now, farewell. Let her die, Andronicus. Thou dost not slumber. See thy two sons' heads. Thy warlike hand, thy mangled daughter here. Thy other banished son with his dear sight struck pale and bloodless, and thy brother, I, even like a stony image, cold and numb. I, now no more will I control thy griefs, reddened off thy silver hair, thy other hand gnawing with thy teeth, and be his this dismal sight, the closing up of our most wretched eyes. Now is a time to storm. Why art thou still? <laughs> I just laugh. It fits not with this hour. Why? I have not yet another tear to shed. Besides, this sorrow is an enemy. It would usurp upon my watery eyes and make them blind with tributary tears. Then which way shall I find revenge's cave? For these two heads do seem to speak to me and threaten me I shall never come to bliss till all these mischiefs returned again. Even in their throats that have committed them, come, let me see what task I have to do and swear unto my soul to right your wrongs. The vow is made. Come, brother, take a head, and in this hand the other I will bear. Lavinia, thou shalt be employed in these arms. Bear thou my hand, sweet wench, between thy teeth. And for thee, boy, go get thee from my sight. Thou art an exile, and thou must not stay. Hie to the Goths and raise an army there. And if you love me, and I think as I think you do, let's kiss and part, for we have much to do. Well, Andronicus, my noble father, the woefulest man that ever lived in Rome. Farewell, proud Rome, till Lucius come again. He loves his pledges dearer than his life. Farewell, Lavinia, my noble sister. Oh, what thou worth as thou to four hast been. But now, now Lucius and Lavinia lives, but in oblivion and hateful griefs. If Lucius live, he will requite your wrongs and make proud Saturn and his queen beg at the gates like Tarquin and his queen. Now will I to the Goths and raise a power to be revenged on Rome and Saturn. Exit Lucius. Scene two. A room in Titus's house, a banquet set out. Enter Titus, Marcus, Lavinia, and young Lucius, a boy. So, so, now, sit, and look you weak no more. Then we'll preserve just so much strength in us and revenge those bitter woes of ours. Marcus, unknit that poor sorrow ridden knot. Thy niece and I, poor creatures, want our hands and cannot passionate our tenfold grief with folded arms. Thou map of woe, that thus does talk in signs when thy poor heart beats without ages beating. Thou canst not strike it thus to make it still. Wound it with sighing, girl, kill it with groans, or get some little knife between thy teeth, and just against thy heart make thou a hole, that all the tears that thy poor eyes let fall may run into that sink and soaking in, drown the lamenting fool in so sea salt tears. My brother, fine. Teach her not thus to lay such violent hands upon her tender life. How oh, now? Has sorrow me thee dote already? Why, Marcus, no man should be mad but I. 
What violence can she lay upon her life? And wherefore dost thou urge the name of hands? Oh, handle not the theme to talk of hands, lest we remember still that we have none. Fie, fie, how frantically I square my talk, and if we should forget we had no hands. If Marcus did not name the word of hands, come, let's fall to, and gentle girl eat this. Here is no drink. Marcus, what she says, I can interpret all her modern signs. She says she drinks no other drink but tears, brewed with her sorrow, meshed upon her cheeks. Speechless complainer, I will learn thy thought. In thy dumb action I will I be as perfect as begging hermits in their holy prayers. Thou shalt not sigh, nor hold thy stumps to heaven, nor wink, nor nod, nor kneel, nor make a sign, but I of these will rest an alphabet and by still practice learn to know the meaning. But grandfather, with these bitter deep laments, make my aunt marry with some pleasing tale. Alas, the tender boy in passion move doth weep to see his grandsire's heaviness. What does thou strike at, Marcus, with thy knife? At that I have killed my lord a fly. Out on thee, murderer! Thou killest my heart! Mine eyes are cloyed with you of tyranny. A deed of death done on the innocent? Becomes not Titus his brother? Get thee gone, I see thou art not for my company. Alas, my lord, I have but killed a fly. But? How if that fly had a mother and father? Poor harmless fly that with his pretty buzzing melody came here to make us merry, and thou hast killed him. Pardon me, sir, it was a black ill-favored fly. Like to the empress more, therefore I killed him. Oh, 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 oh. then pardon me for re reprehending thee, for thou hast done a charitable deed. Give thy knife. I will insult on him, flattering myself as if it were the more. Come hither purposely to poison me. There's for thyself, and there's for Tamara. Ah, sirrah! Yes, I think we are not brought so low that between us we can kill a fly that comes in likes of a coal black moor. Alas, poor man, grief has so wrought on him, he takes false shadows for true substances. Come, take away. Lavinia, go with me. I'll to the closet and go ahead and go read with thee. Sad stories chanted in the times of old. Come, boy, and go with me. Thy sight is young, and, th and thou shalt read when mine begin to dazzle. Act 4, Scene 1, Rome, Titus's Garden. Enter young Lucius and Lavinia, running after him. Young Lucius flies from her with books under his arm. Then enter Titus and Marcus. Help! Grandsire, help! My aunt Lavinia follows me everywhere. I know not why. Good Uncle Marcus, see how swift she comes. Alas, sweet aunt, I know not what you mean. And by me, Lucius. Do not fear thy aunt. She loves thee, boy, too well to do thee harm. Ah, uh, when my father was in Rome, she did. What means my niece Lavinia by the signs? Fear her not, Lucius. So, somewhat does she mean. See, Lucius, how much she makes of thee. Some whither would, would she have go with her. Canst thou not guess wherefore she plies thee thus? My lord, I know not. I, nor can I guess, unless some fit or frenzy do possess her. For I have heard my grandsire say full oft extremity of griefs would make men mad. And I have read that Hecuba of Troy ran mad through sorrow that made me to fear. Although, my lord, I know my noble aunt loves me as dear as e'er my mother did, and, and would not but in fury fright my youth, which made me down to throw my books and fly. Causeless, perhaps. But pardon me, sweet aunt, and madam, if my uncle Marcus go, I most willingly attend your ladyship. Lucius, I will. How now, Lavinia? Marcus, what means this? 
some book there is that she desires to see. Which is it, a girl uh, of these? Oh, oh, open them, boy. Lucius, what book is that she taught us so? Uh, grandsire, tis Ovid's Metamorphosis. Oh. So visually she turns to leaves. What would she find? Lavinia, shall I read? This is a tragic tale of Philomel and treats of Tereus's treason and his rape and rape. The rape, I fear, was root of thine annoy. Hey, brother, see? Know how she quotes the leaves? Lavinia, wert thou thus surprised, sweet girl? Ravished and wronged as Philomela was? Forced in thy ruthless vast and in gloomy woods? See, see, I said a place there is where we did hunt. Oh, had we never, never hunted there. Patterned by the poet dear describes by nature made for murders and for rapes. Oh, why should nature be so foul a den unless the gods delight in tragedies? Give signs, sweet girl, for here are none but friends. What Roman lord was it durst do the deed? Or slunk not Saturnine as Tarquin erst that left the camp to sin in Lucrece's bed? Sit down, sweet things. Mother, sit down by me. Apollo, as Jove or Mercury, inspire me that I may this treason find. My lord, look here, look here, Lavinia. This sandy plot is plain. Guide, if thou canst, this after me. I have writ my name without the help of any hand at all. Cursed be that horse that forced us to the shift. Write thou, good niece, and here display at last what God will have discovered for revenge. Heaven guide thy pen to print thy sorrows plain, that we may know the traitors and the truth. Oh, do you read, my lord, what she hath writ? Stuprum, Chiron, Demetrius. What? What? The lustful sons of Tamora? Performers of this, performers of this heinous bloody deed? Oh, come, thee gentle lord, although I know there is enough written upon this earth to stir a mutiny in the mildest thoughts and arm the minds of infants who exclaims, My lord, dealer, kneel down with me. Lavinia, kneel. And kneel, sweet boy. And swear with me that we will prosecute by good advice mortal revenge upon these traitorous Goths and see their blood or die with this reproach. Sure enough, and now you know how. And you, but if you hunt these bear whelps, then beware. The lamb will wake, and if she wind you once, she's with the lion deeply still in league and lulls him while she playeth on her back. And when he sleeps, will she do what she list? You are a young huntsman, Marcus. Let it alone and come. I will go get a loaf of brass, and with a gad of steel will write these words and lay it by. The angry northern wind will blow these sands like civil leaves abroad. And where's your lesson then? Boy, what say you? I say, my lord, that if I were a man, their mother's bedchamber should not be safe, for these bad bondmen do yoke of Rome. Ay, uh, that's my boy. Thy father hath full oft for his ungrateful country done the like. And uncle, so will I, and if I live. Come, go with me into mine armory. Lucius, I'll fit thee, and with all my boy shall carry from me to the Empress's son presents that I intend to send them both. Come, come, that'll do my message, will it not? I with my dagger in their bosoms, grandsire. No, boy, not so. I'll teach thee another course. Lavinia, come. Marcus, look to my house. Lucius and I will brave it at the court, and marry will we, sir, and we'll be waited on. Oh, heavens, can you hear a good man groan and not relent or not compassion him? Marcus, attend him in his ecstasy. 
Thou hast more scars of sorrow in his heart than foreman's marks upon his battered shield. But yet so just that he will not revenge, revenge the heavens of whole old Andronicus. Seen two, the same, a room in the palace. Enter from one side Aaron, Demetrius, and Chiron. From the other side, young Lucius and an attendant with a bundle of weapons and verses writ upon them. Demetrius, here's the son of Lucius. He has some message to deliver us. Aye, some mad message from his mad grandfather. My lords, if all the humblest, humbleness I may, I greet your honors from Andronicus, and pray the Roman gods confound you both. Deciphered, that's the news, for villains marked with rape. May it please you, my grandsire, well advised, hath sent by me the goodliest weapons of his armory to gratify your honorable youth, the hope of Rome. For so he bade me say, and so I do, and with his gifts present your lordships that whenever you have need, you may be honored and appointed well. And so I leave you both like bloody villains. What's here? A scroll and written around about. Let's see. Integer vitae, screllis key, puris non get, mirai eculis nec arcu. Oh, just a verse in Horus. I know it well. Aye, just a verse in Horus, but right, you have it. What a thing it is to be ass. Here's no sound, just men have found their guilt and sends them weapons wrapped about with the lines that wound beyond their feeling to the quick. But were our witty empress well afoot, she would applaud Andronicus's deceit. But let her rest in her unrest a while. And now, young lords, was not a happy star lead us to Rome, strange and more than so, captives, to be advanced to this height? It did me good before the palace gate to brave the tribune in his brother's hearing. But me more good, to see so great a lord base insinuate and send us gifts. Had he not reason, Lord Demetrius? Did you not use his daughter very friendly? I would we had a thousand dames at such a bay, by turn to serve our lust. <laughs> Terrible wish, and full of love. Here lacks but your mother to say amen. And that she would for 20,000 more. Come, let us go and pray to all the gods for our beloved mother and her pains. Pray to the devils. Gods have given us over. Why, do the emperor's trumpets flourish thus? Be like for joy, the emperor hath a son. Soft, who comes here? Tomorrow, lords. Oh, uh, tell me, did you see Aaron the Moor? Well, more or less, or never at all. Here, here Aaron is, and what with Aaron now? Gentle Aaron, we are all undone. Now help, or we'll be tied together more. Why? What a culture willing does this keep? What does thou wrap and fumble in thy arms? Oh, that which I would hide from heaven's eye, our empress's shame and stately Rome's disgrace. She is the delivered, lords. She is the To whom? I mean she brought a bed. Well, God give her good rest. What hath he sent her? A devil. Why, then, she is the devil's dame, a joyful issue. A joyless, dismal, black, and sorrowful issue. Here is the babe, as loathsome as a toad, among the fairest breeders of our clime. The empress sends it thee, thy stamp, thy seal, and bids thee christen it with thy dagger's point. Sounds, you whore! Is the black so base of you, a hue? Sweet blouse. You are a beauteous bosom, sure. Villain, what hast thou done? Which thou cannot undo. Thou hast undone our mother. Villain, I have done thy mother. 
<laughs> and therein, hellish dog, thou hast undone. Woe to her chance, and damned her loathed choice. Accursed the offspring of so fell a fiend. Shall not live. Shall not die. Aaron, it must. Mother wills it so. What must it, nurse? Then let no man but I do execution on my flesh and blood. I'll broach the tadpole on my rapier's point. Nurse, give it me. My sword shall soon dispatch it. Sooner the sword will plow thy bowels up. Stay, murderous villains. Will you kill your brother? Now, by burning tapers to, to, of the sky that shone so brightly when the boy was got, he dies upon my skitmar sharp point that touches this my firstborn son and heir. Tell the emperor to me, I am of age my own. Excuse it how you can. Wilt thou betray thy noble mistress thus? My mistress is my, my mistress. This, myself. The vigor and picture of my youth. Therefore, before all the world do I prefer, this barrage of the world will I keep safe, or some of you shall smoke for it in Rome. By this our mother is forever shamed. Rome will despise her for this foul escape. The emperor in his rage will doom her death. I blush to think upon this thing, know me. Why? There's the privilege your beauty bears, fee fi tetris hue, that will betray with blushing those close enacts and counsels of the heart. Here's a young lad frame of another leer. Look how the black sm slave smells upon his father, as who should say, old lad, I am thy own. He is your brother, loud lords, sensibly fed of the self-blood that first gave life to you. And from that womb were you imprisoned, were he, and from that womb were you imprisoned, where he is enfranchised to come to light. Nay, he is your brother by sure side, although my seal be stamped in face. Aaron, what shall I say unto the Empress? Advise thee, Aaron, what is to be done, and we will all subscribe to thy advice. Save thou the child, so we may all be safe. Then sit down, and let us all consult. How many women saw this child of his? Cornelia, the midwife, and myself, and no one else but the delivered empress. The empress, the midwife, and yourself. Two may keep counsel when the third's away. Go to the empress and tell her I said this. <gasps> <clears throat> So cries, I am prepared to spit. What meanest thou, Aaron? Wherefore didst thou this? Oh, Lord, tis a deed of policy. Shall she live to betray the guilt of ours? A long-tongued babbling god? No, Lord, no. And now it be known to you my full intent. Not far one Muli lives, my countryman. His wife but yesternight, but yesternight was brought to bed. His child is like to her. Air as you are, go pack within and give the mother gold and tell them both the circumstance of all. And how by this their child shall be advanced and be received by the emperor's hair and substituted in place of mine to calm this tempest swirling in the court and let the emperor dandle him for his own. Hark you, lords, you see, I have given her spike and you must needs bestow her funeral. The fields are near, and you gallant grooms, this done. See you take no longer days, but send this midwife presently to me. The midwife and the nurse will well made away. Let, then let the ladies tattle me, please. And I see thou wilt not trust the air with secrets. For this air of Tamara, herself and hers, are highly bound to thee. Now to the Goths, as swift as swallow flies. There to dispose the stretch of mine arms and secretly to greet the Empress' friends. Come on, you thick lips, safe. How bear you hence? For it is you that puts us to our shifts. 
make you feed on berries and roots, and feed you on curds and whey, and suck the golden cabin in the cave, and bring you up to be a warrior, and command a camp. Scene three the same, a public place. Enter Titus, bearing arrows with letters at the ends of them. With him, Marcus, his son Publius, young Lucius, and other gentlemen, Sempronius and Caius with foes. Come, Marcus. Come, kinsman. This is the way. Sir boy, let me see your archery. Look, you draw home enough and insist they are straight. Terras Astria reliquit. Do you remembered, Marcus? She's gone. She's fled. Sirs, take you to your tools. You, cousins, shall go sound the ocean and cast your nets. Happily you may catch her in the sea. Yet there's as little justice as, as at land. No. Publius and Sempronius, you must do it. Tis you must dig with Matic and with spade and pierce the inmost center of the earth. Then, when you come to Pluto's region, I pray you, deliver him this petition. Tell him it is for justice and for aid, and that it comes from old Andronicus. Shaken with sorrows in ungrateful Rome. Ah, Rome. Well, well, I made thee miserable what time I threw the people's suffrages on him that thus doth tyrannize for me. Go, get you gone, and pray be careful all, and leave you not a man of war unsearched. This wicked emperor may have shipped her hence, and kinsmen, then may we go pipe for justice. O oh, Publius, tis not this heavy case to see thy noble uncle, uncle thus distract. Therefore, my lord, it highly us concerned by day and night to tend him carefully and feed his humor kindly as we may, till time get some careful remedy. Kinsman, his sorrows are past remedy. Join with the, Goth, the Goths and the revengeful war take wrath wreck on Rome for this ingratitude and vengeance on the traitor Saturnine. Publius, how now? How now, my masters? What, have you met with her? No, my good lord. Uh, Pluto sends you word. If you will have revenge from hell, you shall. Marry for justice, she is so employed, he thinks, with Jove in heaven or somewhere else, so that perforce you must needs stay a time. Oh, he doth me wrong to feed me with delays. I'll dive into the burning lake below and pull her out of Asheron by the heels. Marcus, we are but shrubs, no cedars we, no big bone man frame of the Cyclops' eyes, but metal, Marcus, steel to the very black, yet wrung with wrongs more than our backs can bear. And since there is no justice on earth nor hell, we will solicit heaven and move the gods to send down justice for to wreak our wrongs. Come to this gear. You're a good archer, Marcus. Add Jovum, that's for you, here. Add Apollinem, add Martin, that's for myself. Here, boy, to Alice. Here, to Mercury, to Saturn, Gaius, not to Saturnine. You are as good to shoot against the wind. To it, my boy. Marcus, loose when I bid, on my word. I have written to effect. There's not a god left unsolicited. Then you can shoot all your shafts into the court. We will afflict the emperor in his pride. Now, masters, draw. Let loose, so oh, well said, Lucius, good boy, in Virgo's lap. Give it, Pallas. My lord, I am a mile beyond the moon. Your letter is with Jupiter by this. News, news from heaven, Marcus. The post has come. Sirrah, what tidings have you? Any letters? Shall I have justice? What say, Jupiter? Oh, the gibbet maker. He says that he hath taken them down again. For the man must not be hanged till the next week. Well, what says Jupiter? I ask thee. Alas, sir, I know not Jupiter. I never drank with him in all my life. Oh, my villain, art thou not the carrier? I, of my pigeons, sir, nothing else. Why, didst thou not come from heaven? From heaven? 
Alas, sir, I never came there. God forbid I should be so bold to press to heaven in my young days. Why, I am going with my pigeons to the tribunal plebes to take up a matter of brawl betwixt my uncle and one of the imperial's men. Why, sir, that is as fit as can to serve for your oration, and let him deliver the pigeons to the emperor for you. Tell me, can you deliver an oration to the emperor with a grace? Nay, truly, sir, I could never say grace in all my life. Sirrah, come hither. Make no more ado, but give your pigeons to the emperor. By me thou shalt have justice at his hands. Hold, hold. Meanwhile, here's money for thy charges. Give me pen and ink. Sirrah, can you with a grace deliver a supplication? Aye, sir. Then here is a supplication for you. And when you come to him, at the first approach you must kneel, then kiss his foot, then deliver up your pigeons and look for your reward. I'll be at hand, sir. See so you do it bravely. I warrant you, sir, let me alone. Sirrah, hast thou a knife? Come, let me see it. Here, Marcus, fold it in the oration, for thou hast made it like a humble supplicant. And when thou hast given it to the emperor, knock at my door and tell me what he says. God be with you, sir. I will. Come, Marcus, let us go. Publius, follow me. Scene four the same, before the palace. Enter Saturninus with the arrows in his hand that Titus shot, Timora, Demetrius, Chiron, lords, and others. Wives, what wrongs are these? Was ever seen an emperor in Rome thus overborn, troubled, confronted thus, and for the extent of equal justice used in such contempt? My lords, you know as, the, as know the mightful gods, however these disturbers of our peace buzz in the people's ears, they are not have passed, but even with law against the willful sons of old Andronicus. And what and if his sorrows have so overwhelmed his wits, Shall we thus afflicted in his reeks, his feats, his frenzy, and his bitterness? And now he writes to heaven for his redress. See here, here's to Jove, and this to Mercury, this to Apollo, and this to the god of war. Sweet scrolls to fly about the streets of Rome. What's this but libeling against the Senate and blaming our injustice everywhere? And goodly humor is it not, lords. Justice were, but if I live, his feigned ecstasies shall be no shelter to these outrages. But he and his shall know that justice lives in Saturninus's health, whom, if she sleep, he'll so awake as she in fury shall cut off the proudest conspirator that lives. My gracious lord. My lovely Saturnine, Lord of my life, commander of my thoughts, calm thee, and bear the faults of Titus's age, the effects of sorrow for his valiant sons, whose love has pierced him deep and scarred his heart, and rather comfort his distressed plight than prosecute the meanest or the best for these contempts. Why, thus it shall become high-witted Tamra to blows withal. But Titus, I have touched thee to the quick, thy life let out. Aaron now be wise, then all is safe. The anchor is in the port. How now, good fellow, wilt thou speak with us? Yea, forsooth. God and Saint Stephen give you good e'en. I have brought you a letter and a couple of pigeons here. Saturninus reads the letter. Go, go. Take him away and hang him presently. How much money must I have? Tell him, Sarah, you must be hanged. Hanged? By her lady that I have brought up to a neck by a fair end. A spiteful and intolerable wrongs. Shall I endure this monstrous villainy? I know from whence the same place proceeds. May this be born at his as if his traitorous sons that died by law for murder of our brother have by my means been butchered wrongfully. Go, drag the villain here by 
drag the villain hither by the hair. Nor age nor honor shall shape privilege. For this proud mock, I'll be thy slaughter man, sly frantic wrench that hopest to make me great in hope thyself should govern Rome and me. What news with thee, Aemilius? Arm, my lords. Rome never had more cause. The Goths had gathered head, and with a power of high resolved men bent to the spoil, they hither marched a main under conduct of Lucius, son to old Andronicus, whose who threats in course of this revenge to do as much as ever Coriolanus did. Is warlike Lucius general of the Goths? These tidings nip me, and I hang the head as flowers with frost, or grass beat down with storms. I now begin our sorrows to approach. Tis he that common people love so much. Myself hath often heard them say, when I have walked like a private man, that Lucius' banishment was wrongfully, and they have wished that Lucius were their emperor. Why should you fear? Is not your city strong? Aye, but the citizens favor Lucius, and will revolt from me to succor him. King, be thy thoughts imperious like thy name. If the sun dimmed that nuts, is the sun dimmed that gnats do fly in it? The eagle suffers little birds to sing and is not careful what they mean thereby, knowing that with the shadow of his wings he can at pleasure stint their melody. Even so mayest thou, the giddy men of Rome. Then cheer thy spirit, for know, thou emperor, I will enchant the old Andronicus with words more sweet and yet more dangerous than baits to fish or honey stalks to sheep, when as the one is wounded with the bait, the other rotted with delicious feed. But he will not entreat his son for us. If I, if Tamra entreat him, then he will, for I can smooth and fill his aged ear with golden promises that were his heart almost impregnable, his old ears deaf, yet should both ear and heart obey my tongue. Go thou before to be our ambassador, Say that the emperor requests a parley of war like Lucius and appoint the meeting even at his father's house, the old Andronicus. Amidst, do this message honorably, and if he stand on hostage for his safety, bid him demand what pledge will please him best. Your bidding shall I do effectually. Now will I to that old Andronicus and temper him with all the art I have to pluck Prag Lucius from the warlike Goths. And now, sweet emperor, be blithe again and bury all thy fear in my devices. Then go successively and plead to him. Act 5, scene 1. Plains near Rome. Enter Lucius with an army of Goths with drum and colors. Approved warriors and my faithful friends. I have received letters from great Rome, which signifies what hate they bear their emperor, and how desirous of our sight they are. Therefore, great lords, be as your titles witness, imperious and impatient of your wrongs, and wherein Rome hath done you any scathe, let him make treble satisfaction. Brave slip sprung from the great Andronicus, whose name was once our terror, now our comfort, whose high exploits and honorable deeds in grateful Rome requites foul contempt. Be bold in us, we'll follow where thou leadest. Like singing bees in hottest summer's days, led by their master to the flowered fields, and be avenged of cursed Tamara. I humbly thank you, and I thank you all. But who comes here, led by a lusty goth? Uh, renowned Lucius, from our troops I strayed to gaze upon a ruinous monastery, and as I earnestly did fix mine eye upon the wasted building, suddenly I heard a child cry underneath the wall. I made into the noise, and, and when soon I heard the crying babe controlled with this discourse, Peace, tawny slave, half me and half thy dame, did I not thy hue be wry, whose brat thou art? Had nature lent thee but thy mother's look, villain, thou might, mightst have been an emperor, but were thou 
but were the bull and cow are both milk white, they never do beget a old black calf. Peace, villain, peace. Even thus he rates the babe, for I must bear thee to a trusty goth, who, when he knows thou art the empress's babe, will hold thee dearly for thy mother's sake. And this, my weapon drawn, I rushed upon him, surprised him suddenly, and brought him hither to use as you think needful of the man. Ah, worthy goth. This is the incarnate devil that robbed Andronicus of his good hand. This is the pearl that pleased your empress eye, and here's the base fruit of his burning lust. Say, wall-eyed slave, whither wouldst thou convey this growing image of thy fiend-like face? Why dost not speak? What? Deaf? Not a word? A halter, soldiers! Hang him on this tree! and by his side his fruit of bastardy. Touch not the boy, he is royal blood. Too like the sire for ever being good. First hang the child, that he may see it sprawl, a sight to vex the father's soul withal. Get me a ladder. Lucius, save the child. And bear it for me to the empress. If thou do this, I shall show thee wondrous things that highly may advantage thee to hear. If thou wilt not, befall what may befall, I will speak no more, but vengeance rot you all. Say on. If it please me which thou speaks, thy child shall live, and I will see it nourished. Then if it please thee, why assure thee, Lucius, to thy soul hear what I shall speak, for I must talk of murders, rapes and massacres, acts of black night, abominable deeds, come plots of mischief, treason, villainies, rueful to hear, yet piteously performed. And thou shalt be buried by my death, unless thou swear to me my child shall live. Tell on thy mind, I say that thy child shall live, Swear that he shall, and then I will begin. Who should I swear by? Thou believest no God. That granted, how canst thou believe an oath? Yet, for I know thou art religious, and hast a thing with thee called conscience, and with twenty popish, and with twenty popish tricks and ceremonies which I have seen thee carefully to observe. Therefore, urge thy oath, that I know an idiot holds his babble for God, and keep thy oath which by that God he swears, by that same God, what God soever it be, that thou adorest and have in reverence, to save my boy, to nourish and bring him up, or else I will discover not to thee. Even by my God, I swear to thee, I will. First know thou, I begot him on the earth. Oh, most insatiate and luxurious woman. Tut, Lucius, this is but a deed of charity. <laughs> to that which thou shalt hear me anon. Tis where two sons that murdered Bassianus. They cut thy sister's tongue and ravished her, and cut her hands and trimmed her as thou sawst. Oh, thou despicable villain! Callest thou that trimming? Why, she was washed and cut and trimmed. T'was trimmed sport for them. They had the doing of it. Barbarous, beastly villains like thyself. Indeed, I was their tutor to instruct them. That carding spirit had they from their mother, as sure as card has ever won thy st. That bloody mind I think they learned for of me. As true a dog as ever fought ahead, well, let my deeds be witness of my worth. I train thy brethren to thy guyful hole where the dead corpse of Bassianus lay. I wrote the letter that thy father found and hid the gold with the letter mentioned. Confeder with the queen and her two sons, and what not done that thou hast cost to rule, wherein I had no stroke of mischief in it. I played the cheater for thy father's hand, and when I had it, drew myself apart and broke my heart with extreme laughter. I pried through a crevice of the wall, when for his hand he held his two sons' heads, 
beheld his tears and laughed so heartily that both my eyes were rainy like to his. And when I told the empress of this fort, she swooned, almost pleasing at my tail, and for the tidings gave me twenty kisses. But canst thou say all this and never blush? Art thou not sorry for these heinous deeds? I have not done a thousand more. Even now I curse the day. And yet I think if you come within the compass of my curse, were I not some notorious ill as kill a man or else devise his death, ravish a maid or plot the way to, to, to do it, accuse some innocent and forswear myself to deadly enmity between two friends, make poor men's cattle break the neck, set fire on barns and haystacks in the night, and bid their owners quench them with their tears. Oft have I dug up dead men from their graves, set them upright at their friend's door, even when their sorrows are almost forgot, and on their skins, as on the barks of trees with my knife carved in Roman letters. Let not our sorrow die, though I am dead. <laughs> I have done a thousand dreadful things, as willingly as one would kill a fly, and nothing grieves me heartily indeed, but that I cannot do ten thousand more. Bring down the devil, for he must not die so sweet a death as hanging presently. If there be devils, would I were a devil to live and burn in everlasting fire, so might I hear, might have your company in hell. But to torment with you, but to torment with my bitter tongue. Sir, stop his mouth and let him speak no more. My lord, there is a messenger from Rome, desires to be admitted to your presence. Let him come near. Welcome, Amelius. What's the news from Rome? Sir Lucius and Princess of the Goths, the Roman Emperor greets you all by me and for he understands you are in arms, he craves a parley at your father's house, willing you to demand your hostages, and they shall be immediately delivered. What says our general? Amelius, let the emperor give his pledges to my father and my uncle Marcus, and we will come. March away. Seen to Rome before Titus's house. Enter Tamora, Demetrius, and Chiron disguised. Thus, in this strange and sad habiliment, will I encounter with Andronicus and say, I am revenge, sent from below to join with him and right his heinous wrongs. Knock at his study where they say he keeps to room any strange plots of dire revenge. Tell him revenge is come to join with him and work confusion on his enemies. Who doth molest my contemplation? Your trick to make me ope the door? That so my sad decreases may fly away, and all my study be to of no effect? You are deceived for what I mean to do. See here in bloody lines I have set down, and see what is written shall be executed. Titus, I am come to talk with thee. No, not a word. How can I grace thy, my talk? Want a hand to give it action? Thou hast the odds of me, therefore, no more. If thou didst know me, thou wouldst talk with me. I am not mad, I know thee well enough. Witness this wretched stump. Witness these crimson knee lines. Witness these trenches made by grief and care. Witness the tiring day and heavy night. Witness all sorrow, for I know that I know thee well. For our proud empress, mighty Tamara, is not thy coming for my other hand? No, thou sad man, I am not Tamra. She is thy enemy, and I thy friend. I am revenge, sent from the infernal kingdom to ease the gnawing vulture of thy mind by working recall vengeance on thy foes. Come down and welcome me this world's light. Confer with me of murder and of death. There's not a hollow cave or lurking place, no vast obscurity or misty veil where bloody murder or detested rape can couch your fear but I will find them out, and in their ears tell them my dreadful name, Revenge, which makes the foul offender quake. Art thou revenge? Art thou, art thou sent to me to be a torment to mine enemies? I am. Therefore, come down and welcome me. 
<laughs> Do me some service, or I come to thee. Lo, by thy side, where rape and murder stands. Now give me some service that thou art revenge. Stab them, or tear them by thy chariot wheels, and then I'll come and be thy wagoner, and whirl along with, with thee about the globe, so thou destroy rapine and murder there. These are my ministers, and come with me. Are these thy ministers? What are they called? Rapine and murder. Therefore call it so, because they take vengeance of such kind on men. Good Lord! How like the Empress' sons they are! And you the Empress! But we worldly men have miserable, mad, mistaking eyes. O sweet revenge! Now do I come to thee, and if one's embracement will content thee, I will embrace thee in it and by. This closing with him fits his lunacy. Whate'er I forge to feed his brain-sick humors, do you uphold and maintain in your speeches, for now he firmly takes me for revenge, and being credulous in this mad thought, I'll make him send for Lucius his son, and whilst I at a banquet hold him sure, I'll find some cunning practice out of hand to scatter and disperse the giddy goths, or at least make them his enemies. See, here he comes, and I must ply my theme. Long have I been forlorn, and all for thee. Welcome, to Red Fury, to my woeful house. Rapine and murder, you are welcome too. How like the empress and her sons you are. Well, you are fitted. Had you but a or could not all hell afford you such a devil? But welcome as you are, what shall we do? What wouldst thou have us do, Andronicus? Show me a murderer, I'll deal with him. Show me a villain that hath done a rape, and I am sent to be revenged on him. Show me a thousand that have done thee wrong, and I will be revenged on all of them. Look round about the wicked streets of Rome, and when thou findest a man that's like thyself, good murder, stab him. He's a murderer. Go thou with him, and when it is thy hap to find another that is like to be thee, good rapine, stab him. He is a ravisher, and go thou with them. And in the emperor's court, there is a queen attended by a moor. Well, shall thou know her by thy own proportion, for up and down she doth resemble thee. I pray thee, do on them some violent death. They have been violent to me and mine. Well, hast thou lessened us, if shall we do. But would it please thee, good Andronicus, to send for Lucius, thy thrice valiant son who leads towards Rome a band of warlike Goths, and bid him come and banquet at thy house? When he is here, even at thy solemn feast, I will bring in the empress and her sons, the emperor himself, and all thy foes. And at thy mercy shalt they stoop and kneel, and on them shalt thou ease thy angry heart. What says Andronicus to this device? Marcus, my brother, to said Andronicus, Marcus, to said Titus calls. Go, gentle Marcus, to thy nephew Lucius. Thou shalt inquire him out among the, the Goths. Bid him to repair to me and bring with him some of the chiefest princes of the Goths. Bid him encamp his soldiers where they are. Tell him the emperor and the empress too feast at my house, and he shall feast with them. This do thou for my love. And so let him, as he regards his aged father's life. This I will do, and soon return again. Now will I hence about thy business, and take my ministers along with me. Nay, nay, let rape and murder stay with me, or else I'll call my brother back again, and cleave to no revenge but Lucius. What say you, boys? Will you abide with him, whilst I go tell my lord the emperor how I have governed our determined jest? Yield to his humor, smooth and speak him fair, and tarry with him till I turn again. I know them all, though they suppose me mad, and I will all reach them in their own devices, a pair of cursed hellhounds and their dam. Madam, depart at pleasure, leave us here. Farewell, Andronicus. Revenge now goes to lay a complot to betray thy foes. I know thou dost, and sweet revenge, farewell. Tell us, old man, how shall we be employed? Oh, God, I have work enough for you to do. 
Publius, come hither. Caius and Valentine. Oh, what is your will? Know you these two? Uh, the Empress's sons, I take them. Chiron and Demetrius. Fie, Publius, fie! Thou art too much deceived. The one is murder and rape is the other's name. Therefore bind them, gentle Publius, Caius and Valentine. Lay hands on them. Off have you heard me wish for such an hour, and now I find it. Therefore, bind them sure, and stop their mouths if they begin to cry. Villains, forbear! We are the Empress's sons! Oh, and therefore, do we what we are commanded. Stop close their mouths, let them not speak a word. Is he sure bound? Look that you bind him last. Come, come, Lavinia. Look, thy foes are bound. Sirs, stop their mouths. Let them not speak to me, but let them hear what fearful words I utter. Oh, villains, Chiron and Demetrius. Here stands the spring whom you have stained with mud. This goodly summer with your winter mixed, you killed her husband, and for that vile fault, Two of her brothers were condemned to death. My hand cut off and made a merry jest. Both her sweet hands, her tongue, and that more dear than hands or tongue, her spotless chastity. Inhuman traitors, you constrained and forced what you would say if I should let you speak. Villains! For shame you could not, you could not beg for grace. Hark, wretches, now I mean to martyr you. This one hand left to cut out your throats, whilst that Lavinia between her, between her stumps doth hold the basin that receives your guilty blood. You know your mother means to feast with me and calls herself revenge and thinks me mad. Hark, villains, I will grind your bones to dust and with your blood and I'll make you a paste, and of the paste a coffin I will rear, and make two pasties of your shameful heads, and bid that strumpet, your unhallowed dam, like to the earth, swallow her own increase. <laughs> this is the feast that I have bid her to, and this the banquet she shall suffer, Tom. For worse than Philomel you use my daughter, and worse than Procne I will be revenged. And now, Prepare your throats, Lavinia. Come, receive the blood. And when they are dead, let me go grind their bones to powder small, and with this hateful liquor temper it. And in that paste, let their vile heads be baked. Come, come, be everyone officious to make this banquet which I wish may prove more stern and bloody than this centaur's feast. See now, bring them in, for I'll play the cook and see them ready against their mother comes. Exit bearing the dead bodies. Scene three, court of Titus's house, a banquet set out. Enter Lucius, Marcus, and Goths with Aaron prisoner. Uncle Marcus, since it is my father's mind that I repaired to Rome, I am content. But first, take you in this barbarous moor, this ravenous tiger, this accursed devil. Let him receive no sustenance. Better him till he be brought into the Empress' face for testimony of her foul proceedings. And see the ambush of our friends be strong. I fear the Emperor means no good to us. Some devil whispers curses in mine ear and prompt me that my tongue may utter forth the ven venomous malice of my swelling heart. Away, inhuman dog, unhallowed slave. Sirs, help our uncle to convey him in. The trumpets show the emperor is at hand. What? Hath the firmament more sons than one? What boots it thee to call thyself a son? Rome's emperor and nephew break the parley. These quarrels must be quietly debated. The, the feast is ready, which the careful Titus hath ordained to an honorable end. 
for peace, for love, for league and good of Rome, please you, therefore, draw nigh and take your places. Marcus, we will. Welcome, my gracious lord. Welcome, dread queen. Welcome, you warlike goths. Welcome, Lucius, and welcome all. Although the cheer be poor, till twill fill your stomachs. Please, you eat of it. Why art thou thus attired, Andronicus? because I would be sure to have all well to entertain your highness and your empress. We are beholding to you, good Andronicus. And if your highness knew my heart, you were. My lord, the emperor, resolve me thus, this. Was it well done of rash Virginius to slay his daughter with his own right hand because she was enforced, stained and deflowered? It was, Andronicus. Your, your reason, mighty lord. Because the girl should not survive her shame, and by her presence still renews his sorrows. A reason, mighty, strong, and effectual. A pattern, precedent, and lively warrant. Huh. For me, most wretched to perform like this. Die. Die, Lavinia, and thy shame with thee, and with thy shame thy father's sorrow. Die. What hast thou done? Unnatural and unkind. Killed her for whom my tears have made me blind. I am as woeful as Virginius was, and have a thousand times more cause than he to do this outrage, and, and now it is done. What? Was, it, was she ravished? Tell me who did the deed. Will it please you eat? Will it please your highness feed? Why hast thou slain thine only daughter thus? Not I. T'was Chiron and Demetrius. They ravished her and cut away her tongue, and they, t'was they, that did her all this wrong. Go fetch them hither to us presently. Why, they are... They, <laughs> there they are both baked in that pie, wherever th their mother daintily has fed, eating the flesh that she herself hath bred. Tis true, tis true. Witness my knife's sharp point. He kills Tamara. Die, frantic wretch, for this accursed deed. Oh! Titus. Can the son's eye behold his father bleed? There's me for me, death for a deadly deed. He kills Saturninus, a great tumult. Lucius, Marcus, and others go up in the balcony. You sad-faced men, people and sons of Rome, by uproar severed as a flight of fowl, scattered by winds and high tempestuous gusts. Oh, let me teach you how to knit again, this scattered corn into one mutual teeth, these broken limbs again into one body lest Rome herself be bane unto herself, and she who mighty kingdoms curtsy to, like a forlorn and desperate castaway, do shameful executions on, on herself. But if my frosty signs and chaps of age give wit, grave witness of true experience, cannot it induce you to attend my words. Speak, Rome's dear friend, my heart is not compact of flint nor steel, nor can I utter all our bitter grief. But floods of tears will drown my oratory and break my utterance even in the time when it should move you to attend me most and force you to commiseration. Here's Rome's young captain. Let him tell the tale. Your hearts will throb and weep to hear him speak. Then, gracious auditory, be it known to you that Chiron and the damned Demetrius were they that murdered our emperor's brother. And they it were that ravished our sister. For their fell faults, our brothers were beheaded. Our father's tears despised and basely cousin of that true hand that fought Rome's quarrel out 
and sent her enemies into the grave. Lastly, myself, unkindly banish it. The gates shut on me and turned weeping out to beg relief among Rome's enemies, who drowned their enmity in my true tears and oped their arms to embrace me as a friend. I am the turn forth, be it known to you that have preserved her welfare in my blood and from her bosom took the enemy's point, sheathing the steel in my adventurous body. Alas, you know I am no vaunter, I. My scars can witness, dumb although they are, that my report is just and full of truth. But soft, methinks I do digress too much, citing my worthless praise. No. Pardon me, but when no friends are by, men praise themselves. Now is mine turn to speak. Behold this child. Of this was tomorrow delivered. The issue of an ir irreligious moor, chief architect and plotter of these woes. The villain is alive in Titus' house. And as he is to witness, this is true. Now judge what cause had Titus to revenge these wrongs, unspeakable past patients, or more than any living man could bear. Now you have heard the truth. What say you, Romans? Have we done aught amiss? Show us within and from the place where you behold us pleading the poor remain of Andronike. Will. Hand in hand, all headlong hurl ourselves, and on the ragged stones beat forth our soul, and make a mutual closure of our house. Speak, Romans, speak, and ye, if you shall, lo, hand in hand, Lucius and I will fall. Come, come, thou reverend man, man of Rome, and bring our emperor gently in thy hand. Lucius, our emperor, for well I know the common voice do cry, it shall be so. Lucius, all hail Rome, royal emperor. Go, go into old Titus' sorrowful house, and hither hail that believing more, to be a judge some direful slaughtering death as punished for his most wicked life. Lucius, all hail, Rome's gracious governor. Thanks, gentle Romans. May I govern so to heal Rome's harms and wipe away her woe. But gentle people, give me aim a while, for nature puts me to a heavy task. Stand all aloof, but uncle, draw you near. To shed obsequious tears upon this trunk. Oh, take this warm kiss on thy pale cold lips. These sorrowful drops upon thy blood-stained face, the last true duties of thy noble son. Tear for tear, and loving kiss for kiss, thy brother Marcus tenders on thy lips. Oh, were the sum of these that I should pay countless and infinite, yet would I pay them. Come hither, boy. Come, come and learn of us to melt in showers. My grandsire loved thee well. Many a time he danced thee on his knee, sung thee asleep, his loving breast thy pillow. Many a matter hath he told to thee, and bid thee bear his pretty tales in mind, and talk of him when he was dead and gone. How many thousand times that these poor lips, when they were living, warmed themselves on thine? Oh, now, sweet boy, give them their latest kiss. Bid him farewell. Commit him to the grave. Give them that kindness and take leave of them. Grandsire, grandsire, even with all my heart, when I were dead, so you did live again. Oh Lord, I cannot speak to him for weeping. My tears will choke me if I open my mouth. You sad Andromache, how done with woe, have done with woes. Give sentence on this execrable wretch that hath been breeder of these dire events. Set him breast deep in earth and famish him. There let him stand and rave and cry for food. If anyone relieves or pities him for the offense he dies, this is our doom. Some stay to see him fastened in the earth. 
Oh, why should Wraith be mute and Fury dumb? I am no baby. I, that with braced prayers, I should repent the evils I have done? <laughs> 10,000 worse than ever yet I did would I perform if I might have my will. If one good deed in all my life I did, I do repent it from my very soul. Some loving friends, convey the emperor hence and give him burial in his father's grave. My father and Lavinia shall forthwith be closed in our household's monument. As for that heinous tiger, Tamara, no funeral rite, nor man in mourning weeds. No mournful bell shall ring her burial, but throw her forth to beasts and birds of prey. Her life was beastly and devoid of pity, and being so shall have like want of pity. See justice done on Aaron, that damned moor, by whom our heavy haps had their beginning. Then afterwards, to order well the state, that like events may ne'er it ruminate. Curtain. Yes. Yay. <laughs> Woohoo, that was fun, guys. <laughs> Great job, everybody. I love to see them pasties, don't you? <laughs> I'm very sticky now. <laughs> what? It was everything. <laughs> I still have more in my cup. <laughs> oh, my God. Very good, Taylor. Very, very good. So I now have you, else to now do. you play, Maria Elena. Say it again. Say so now you know what Titus Andronicus is about. <laughs> Did you really not know anything about it? No. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Re I I didn't remember how like uh, how awful it is to. <laughs> it's even worse to hear people perform it than it is to re like. It's just. <laughs> 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 awful. 